Tom Sangrick from the Small Business Administration. Basically, SBA, we work with um, the public. We work with the sm banks in the area to make loans for small businesses. Uh, um, we provide a guarantee to the SBA to the loans in order to, for the banks to make loans. And we work with all the local banks. You know, Key Bank, we definitely work with. They're one of our top lenders, Huntington, U.S. Bank. We work with all the banks. Some banks do more than other ones. And what we do is basically we can, um, situation I think you had where you had a bad year, um, good years in the past, you know, good years in the future, but had a bad year. So that's a perfect example of why a bank would want to do an SBA loan because they cover that bad year. They got a 75, 85% guarantee and um, they're able to do the, the loan because they got that protection, you know, so. Excuse me, John, what's your last name? Uh, Sangrick, S-A-N-G-R-I-K. So I'm going to go over a, a PowerPoint presentation. Sorry, I had to create all this chaos doing that. So, um, got the next next one there. So basically, SBA. Has everybody heard of SBA? It basically, started in the 1950s to help uh, promote small business. So we've been around for you know close to 60 years now. Uh, we're basically a an agency of the U.S. government, you know, a separate agency. We're not connected with anybody. Even though they're always trying to put us with somebody, they haven't yet so far. Uh, so basically, we're prim primarily advocate for small business, so we engage in procurement, capital formation, and small business counseling. The next slide. So how, how it works, SBA does not make direct loans. We did the last time in the 80s we made direct loans, and there was talk, the Recovery Act, making direct loans, but it never went through. So all our loans are made by, by banks, or sometimes credit unions or you know, non-bank lenders also. So basically, SBA is a co-signer for the small business. So the bank makes the loan, the lender makes the loan, we guarantee it. So you do need to get a financial institution involved. So some of the benefits of SBA lending is uh, we can a lot of times give a longer payment period than a bank normally wants to give. You can go up to 25 years on you know, real estate, can be 10 to 15 years on equipment, up to seven years on working capital. We may have better pricing, basically a market rate of interest. You know, a lot of times it's tied to the prime rate, which is three and a quarter percent right now, so it might be, uh, can go up to two and a three quarters above prime for a lot of our loans. So it can be a lower down payment and flexible repayment options, and you know, maybe less collateral than you would need with a bank. Get the next slide. So some of the facts about SBA, you know, we don't make direct loans or loans through the lenders. Uh, basically guarantee loans based on similar credit criteria a bank normally uses. We guarantee loans that on terms that may not be available through the bank. Uh, our loans are, are pretty fast. A lot of times the delays are, you know, the banks waiting for more information. Of course, they, they blame us, you know, but uh, um, so if it gets out of SBA to our, our processing centers or whatever, we have some programs where it could be, you know, approved within 24 hours, our express loan program. So um, then we do have a processing center in Little Rock, Arkansas and, and in California. So um, and most of our main program, there's no job creation requirements. So the next slide. Some of our success stories over the years, businesses that started off real small and grew big Ones like Outback Steakhouse, Intel, uh, Jamboree, PeopleSoft, Nike, Staples, Costco, FedEx, Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. You know, ones like that, like Nike out in Oregon, they started a long time ago in the, I think, 70s. Uh, um, gave them like their first loan to get them started on their way, you know, the big time here. So FedEx, Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream actually had like seven, eight workouts before they finally made it. They kept, you know, not making out, not making out until we kept working it out. That's the one good thing about an SBA loan. Um, the bank makes the loan, but we have a guarantee behind it, so you almost got like a, somebody that you can talk to beside the bank if you got a problem, you know, and we can encourage the banks to work it out, give them interest only, get the further payments, give them time to get things, uh, um, you know, back on board, because the bank's got a guarantee of 75, 85% guarantee, so we're able to provide like uh, time that, you know, get over, get over the bumps there. The next slide. So access to capital, how we um, help is uh, we provide a guarantee 
And the maximum loan side just got raised up to five million. It was uh, two million before as part of the Jobs Act, so we can actually do bigger type loans. And we did a bigger type loan out in uh, Maselli Cheese out in Cleveland here. It was the biggest one in SBA history. It was like our 504 loan program would actually go up to a million or five and a half million. So right in Cleveland, we did the first biggest loan in SBA history for Maselli Cheese a few months ago. So we can basically typically do uh, guarantees of loans uh, less than 150,000. We guarantee 85 percent for loans greater than 150,000, 75 percent. Last year we had with all the stimulus stuff, we actually had guarantees up to 90 percent. So that was just that's passed, but, but that's what we did. When things are really tight, we really you know try to help banks make loans uh, you know more than they normally would. Bank, like I said, the banking environment's been pretty tough, and we provide a lot of incentives for the banks to make the loans, and you know, pretty much gave them all kind of stimulus things, and you know, our volume went up pretty good. This year, our volume is up 30% over last year. Okay, next slide. So we provide guarantees for you know things that you normally need, you know, a loan for expansion or renovation, construction of new facilities. Purchase land or building, machinery equipment, furniture and fixtures, leasehold improvements. Get the next slide. Working capital inventory purchases, seasonal lines of credit, refinancing existing debt. You know, other kind of lines of credit also. So we do, I know contractors, you got contracts. Um, we do have a contract program under our cap lines where we can, you know, provide a loan to support that that contract. So that's some of the things we do for so you said that's a different program? Oh, it's under it's under the seven A. It's just under our line of cap line line of credit program. I'll talk about a little about a little bit about that later. But we basically have a program for lines of credit. It could be a seasonal line of credit. It could be a contract line. It could be a, um, you know just a line for you know asset baseline. Let's get the next slide. So basically, the SBA provides uh, the bank with a guarantee in order for them to, to make the loan. They maybe won't do it on their own, but with a guarantee they're able to, to do that. So guarantees range from 50% for our express loans up to 90%. Uh, we have an export loan program that's still 90%. The guaranteed portion can be sold in the secondary market, which means a bank can actually, you know, make a loan and sell off the guaranteed portion. There's a huge market for that. Like we can actually get like up to 10% premiums a bank sells in a secondary market because it's guaranteed by the government, you know. If I could add to that, um, usually the key bank would do that unless it's normally a larger uh, SBA loan, so it's a small SBA loan, stay in house. Right, and if they stay in house, the bank still services the loan. It's not that you have to deal with somebody else. The bank still required to service the loan there, so the next slide. So some of the requirements under our program, 7A programs, uh, a business must be small, and 98% of the businesses are considered small, and they just raised the part of the Jobs Act to size standards, so if you have like a net worth under uh, 5 million or less, you're considered small, um, and average annual sales, 15 million or less, so they've raised the size standards to make more small businesses considered small, so they wanted to get more businesses than what was under the previous size standards. A business must be operated for profit, uh, which means nonprofits are, are not eligible. Um, products must be available to the general public. No prior government loss to the applicant. One of the main government losses is student loans. If you had a bad student loan, you know that's going to stop you from getting an SBA loan. You got to either bring it current or under deferment. You must be a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident. You must have good character. Liquid resource test, uh, all available collateral is typically pledged, and you do have to personally guarantee loans if you're a 20% or more owner. So then some of the eligible businesses are nonprofits, passive holders of real estate, which means if you're just getting real estate in order to lease out and not using it, it's not eligible. If you're, if you're using at least 51% for your existing building, then that's okay. So new construction has to be like uh, two-thirds so you do, uh, I know we get calls a lot of times when people want to rent a house next door, they buy a house that's not eligible for, for SBA. It's basically you have to occupy the real estate. So um, other ones that are ineligible are businesses which restrict patronage. Uh, example is Curves for um, 
we do a lot of curves for women things. Uh, at first they said men weren't allowed in, in there and they had to like change it where men are allowed even though they, they're not going to probably go anyway, but they, 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 can, they can go if they want to. So it's, that's, that's an example. They, could, they couldn't get loans until they, they changed that. Business engaged in promoting religion. Um, pers business owned by persons of poor character, determined by prior criminal history, the prior loss to the government, like student loans or other SP loans that might have been not paid in the past. Other ones that are ineligible are lending, pyramid sales, gambling, sexual type businesses, etc. But Ohio, you know, Ohio Lotto and convenience stores, that's okay, you know, it's, you know, so. so basically, when you talk about the SBA loans, uh, we can go up to like seven years for working capital, up to 25 years for fixed asset. Real estate could be up to 25 years. Equipment could be 10 to 15 years. Um, the interest rates are negotiated between a borrower and lender. They typically, typically cannot exceed the base rate plus two and three quarters percent. And like I said, it could be variable or fixed, you know. So some of the key, the key concept for SBA loans is basically adequate cash flow. You know, collateral may be short, maybe sometimes we can even do startups, we can do other things the bank won't do, but they generally look at, you know, cash flow is the number one criteria, so, you know, they want to make sure the loan can be, can be paid back there. Ne next slide. So the collateral, they do take the available collateral. Like I said, it may be, be considered short by the bank. That's why they'd want a guarantee. But they are going to take what's available. So they're going to take the business assets, even though it may be behind you know, the bank and other people. But we're going to take a blanket anyway. Uh, fixed assets, real estate, if it's, you know, you're getting a loan from you know, building, we're going to take the mortgage. We're going to take a guarantee on the, all 20% or more owners. Uh, um, may even take a second mortgage on a residence, you know, if it's available and it's at least 25% or more equity. A lot of times the bank wants to take that as, you know, extra security there or, or other assets. So there is uh, guarantee fees, you know, that these support our programs for a period last, last few years, they would kind of waive the guarantee fees, but it's back to our normal. For loans, uh, generally up to 150,000, it's two percent of the guaranteed portion, not not the whole loan, just the guaranteed portion, and that can come out of the loan proceeds, you know, if you want. So uh, for loans less than 12 years, a lot of times lines of credit are like that. It's only two, you know, quarter of one percent SBA fee. So as the loans get bigger, the, the SBA guarantee fees do do get bigger. So that's just something to keep in mind that. Uh, um, you know, these monies go to support the, the guarantees that, you know, so. So under the 7A application package, you do need a, a business plan, and that's where the um, Small Business Development Centers and SCORE I'm going to talk to you about. So business plan, you may need a resume, personal financial statement, tax returns, uh, financial statements for existing businesses, current financial statements. If you got a startup business, which we do do startups also, then you would need, you know, reasonable projections, assumptions. So, you got that. so here's some of the situations where an SBA guarantee may be necessary. Why the banks want SBA for these situations, a startup business. A lot of banks won't even touch a startup, you know, without SBA, you know. So we, we can guarantee loans for startups. Lack of collateral is another big one. You know, the bank don't feel there's enough collateral, so they, everything else is okay, so they, they need SBA loan. A lower, lower than normal down payment equity injection, it could be low as, you know, 10 percent. And if you've got an existing business, if you've got already equity built in there, then you don't need additional money. The equity's already there. May give a longer term than lower, which mean lower payments, you know, on the loan. We can do riskier type industries that, you know, banks don't want to touch, like, uh, you know, contractors. Uh, high risk entertainment service, retail, you know, trucking is another one nobody <laughs> wanted to touch. We have a big name and nobody wanted to do anything with cars, autos, nobody wanted to do anything like that. So um, we, can do, we can do all those. If we can get the bank to do it, we still need a bank involved there. Uneven historical revenues or profits, that's kind of what we were talking about. You know, you had good years and a bad year and then bad goods. So that's a situation doing an SBA loan. Tighter than normal debt coverage, change of ownership management, you know, got a good business, they sell it, somebody retires, um, 
got new people in there, so you never know about the new, new ownership, so that's a perfect potential SBA situation. The lending limits are reliance on projections. So, next slide. So why consider SBA as a partner? Um, start, you may have a startup or an industry considered higher risk, need a longer term than offered by the conventional lender, or insufficient collateral to satisfy the lender. So our different SBA loan products, um, S7A just means something that Congress assigned it back whenever they approved their programs. I don't know, that's why it's 7A called. We have our standard business loans. We've got express loans, which are a streamlined program that generally are 50% guarantee. The bank can basically approve it on their own and ask SBA to guarantee it. We give a lower guarantee because of that because we trust the bank and you know, key banks are an express lender. Patriot Express, we can do for veterans. Uh, Community Express program, we got the uh, cap lines, which are lines of credit for, you know, could be for a contract, could be a seasonal line of credit, could be an asset based line. But we got programs for exporting. Government is always um, promoting exporting because, you know, um, we want to sell our you know, stuff over, you know, other countries there. And international trade type loans. Next slide. SB Express is a streamlined program where the lender can actually use their own forms, not the SBAs, and they can do it real fast. And um, we actually can do term loans for revolving lines of credit up to a million dollars now. It's, that's a temporary increase from 350000 So a lot of banks do it for lines of credit, you know, because that's an easy way to do it for the bank. The cap lines are more complicated. And the SB guarantees 50%. Next slide. So we have a 504 certified development program. This is through like a certified development company and there's growth capital here in the Cleveland area that does a lot of these where if you have a long-term need for major fixed assets, usually a building or, or equipment, you can actually do the ventures or up to five and a half million. SBA takes the second position on the project. The bank takes the first. So we can do projects up to, you know, over $10 million or more. And there is a job retention, create a retention of one for every $65,000. So, next slide. So basically the project, the lender has the first 50% of the project, the SBA covers the last 40% and the company puts in at least 10%. And these are, um, for a lender, I think no lender in our office has ever lost on these because they got the first 50% of a, a building or whatever. So even if it would go bad, the lender's in a great position because SBA has got the risk the last 40% of the, the project there. So how do you apply for these loans? Um, they are through a local bank. You know, the bank can make it, the bank can make the loan without SBA, they can just do it on their own, or they can make it with our guarantee or they can decline the loan, but uh, like I said, they don't have to use our programs. You may go to a bank and say, I want an SBA loan, and the bank feels they can do it without SBA, and that's okay, so. So we do have, on the internet, we got the answer desk and ask questions too. We got the home page for, for banking and internet, so pretty good site. You can get a lot of good information there. The next slide. Now this is kind of like what it, what it looks like, so next slide there. We do have a couple um, places like the Small Business Development Center that we have 900 locations. I think that's where you're at um, to provide um, free help, technical assistance, counseling. Um, they're basically with the SBA along with, you know, the private sector and state and local governments to create these small business development centers. The next slide. And we also have SCORE, Service Corps Retired Executives, where they volunteer their time to provide um, expert business advice. Um, and uh, like I said, they try to match up with somebody familiar with that type of uh, industry you're in. So we have a pretty big chapter in Cleveland that uh, um, a lot of, you know, free help, and a lot of times they work together with the small business development centers. A lot of times they're in the same, same place many times. 